Hey, welcome back to the second part of this key tutorial series from Promotion in After Effects. At the moment I'm also shooting a basic key tutorial for Nuke, so you can also check that out. And if you like what you see, just feel free to click the subscribe button, because that helps me in doing more and more of those tutorials. So, for this second part of the tutorial, we will start directly where we ended and we will learn four different things. At first we will try to improve the key that we have so far with some tips and tricks. Then second, we will change the background and therefore we will create a light wrap and also look into some color correction. So let's get started. Okay, so let's just pick up from the end of the first tutorial and this is exactly where we left off. We already have a pretty nice result, but pretty is not good enough for us. You can see it did a really good job for the keying, but now let's just tweak some stuff. The first thing, and this is just something that I tend to do or learn to do, is to really concentrate on picking the right green color. And what I always do is go into the key light, turn off the background, hit Alt plus 4 to just see the mat, and then I click on the green color and scrub through the green tones to really find a result that I'm happy with. And you can see the differences in the green tones right here. So let's hit OK and let's just make a quick picture of that. You can click on the photo and take a snapshot. Edit, undo. This is what we had before and if you click on that eye symbol you can show the snapshot. And this already makes a big difference. So this really looks nice now. Okay, now let me show you some more really cool tips and tricks. Just bring the key into a new composition because we have already denoised our key. So we go to the same position here. And this time we don't choose the effect key light by tipping in key, but go to the animation presets and go to the key light plus key cleaner plus advanced spill suppressor. And this really helps if you're dealing with backgrounds that you didn't jot on the same spot. Once again click on the green screen color and as you may have seen we already have the key light, the key cleaner and the advanced spill suppressor out there and the advanced spill suppressor is off by default. This is just, let me reset this, if it would be on already you wouldn't have any green tone because there's already a spill suppression which means it tries to get rid of all the green tones that are still in the hair and in the skin tone and therefore you couldn't pick a green color. But when we take a close look at that specific effect you can see what this is doing. For example there's a hell lot of green in my shirt and also in the hair if you look at that part. So this is what we concentrate on later. Because as you see when we have the green screen behind us there's a, obviously a green background and that reflects green light all around the image. So later on we will try to mimic that for different backgrounds to make this look very realistic. Back to the beginning. Let's take again our color and this time we go to intermediate result and the intermediate result simply only the key without spill suppression from key light because we will deal with that later on. And again we will try to get the best result possible and as I said at the moment I'm not concerned about all the wrinkles here. We can deal with those later or use our garbage metric or for now let's just roughly paint a mask around it, feather it and this should be fine for the sake of this tutorial. Next one is the key cleaner and when I'm going to some of those hair details here and turn it on and off you can see what this is doing here. It gets rid of some of the extra noisy parts and especially if you have noisy footage when you filmed with a high ISO for example this will really help. But a powerful tool within that is the alpha contrast. So let me go to some hair details here and bring up the alpha contrast. You can see that when I really pump this up that's obviously too much but you can see that we get back some of those nice hair strands. Great, so now let's play with our spill suppressor. We click on that, all the spill is gone 
And this is the standard method and you can go down with the percentage from 0 to 100. But it starts to get interesting when we change it to the ultra settings because then we get some extra features in here. Like for example, we can pick the exact green tone that we want to get rid of. So again, we have to, to turn off key light and the spill suppressor to see the green tone. Click on it and enable it again. Now you can see also in the shirt, if I click on that, they are gone. And we can play with the tolerance now, as well as the desaturation. Obviously you don't want to go to 100 because that desaturates the whole image but it always helps to bring it up a little bit. But the most important part now is our spill color correction. Because you can see with that setting you can change the color where the light seems to blend in with the foreground. So at the border of the alpha. At 50% this is like the default and the color is gray. And if you go down it gets green again and if you go up you get something more in the reds. And also you can boost your key with your luma correction. And this will make sense when we have a look at some backgrounds now. So let's just bring in something. I have just a forest. Which somehow has the same light direction. It's just brighter around that side. Like in the footage I've shot. So let's create an adjustment layer. And in that layer we just pack all the effects that are then going to be applied to the background. So let's take a camera lens blur just to get it out of focus a little bit, maybe just like so. And now back in our Kia, we can now really see what the Luma correction is doing, especially when you take a look over here. See what this is doing? You really get back all the fine details in here. Let's check it out on the other side. turn this on and off. Look for example at that strand here. Really beautiful. And now let's start with, with some fun parts. We can work on the spill correction here and bring it a little bit down again so we get some green tones back in that. So now let me guide you through the different steps of color correction I would love to do now. At first I would try to color correct the foreground. As I've shot this inside a room and this is obviously outside, I would bring in maybe a photo filter to give it a little bit more warmth. By default that should be a warm color. And then I would play a little bit with the black and white tones in the image. What I do here is I bring up my exposure until I only have blacks in here. And you see how strong the blacks are in the footage but there are not that many in the background. So let's go to the adjustment layer again, bring out levels. And we now just try to bring in some blacks. And I want to have kind of a ramp feel to it. So the blacks in the background should start vanishing at first and then the blacks in the footage. In the footage they are really, really strong. So let's just copy the levels, bring them into the footage and just go down a bit with the blacks. So I don't want to have them as strong. Okay, and now you can see in the background all the blacks have a little green tint. So I want to add the same to the foreground. So I go to the green channel and just push the middle of the green more into the black. Just really slightly. Let me just turn on and off the color correction and this is already looking really nice. So that's without the correction, with the correction. Okay, just two more tips. We want to create a light wrap and before we even do that I'm going to show you a really cool trick I used to do to get some atmosphere onto my skin tones. So for that I want to basically mix and merge my skin tones with all the colors that exist in the background. So therefore let's duplicate the background, bring it on top and add a Gaussian blur. And now just blur the shit out of it until it's just color. This is kind of the color tones I want to add to my skin. So therefore let's duplicate the key, bring it on top and use this as a mat for that color information. So we just set it to alpha mat. And there we have it. Now, as I said, I want to use the colors of it. So let's change the blending mode to color. Now it still doesn't look as expected. Let's unsolo this. We have all the colors in here now, which is nice, but it's just way too strong. So we hit T for opacity 
just go down with the opacity. Maybe just like 10%. And when we turn this on and off, maybe just for the sake of this tutorial to see it better, we bring it up to like 25, which is too much, but just to show you. So now, last but not least, we want to create a light wrap. So what is a light wrap? A light wrap is the light that wraps around the footage, or in this case around my body and around my hair. So all the light that's in the scene would wrap around me. So we need to create a mat that only touches the edges of the alpha. So let's do that. Therefore I'm just duplicating the key twice. I'll bring it to the top, just solo it so you can see it. Now we use it as an alpha mat. So we have one footage and the other one lies on top and cuts it out so we basically wouldn't see anything. So we go to alpha inverted and you can just now see a little bit of the border because we have all the semi-transparent areas there. And all we need to do now is once again get a choker and choke the whole mat. So in this way now we have a mat that only goes around the edges. And then we can also blur that with a Gaussian blur. Just to get a soft border over here. And now let's pre-compose this and call it our light wrap. So if we watch that alone, this is kind of the mat we have right now. And again, we wanna use the background color and hold of the background to wrap around me. So let's just once again use the background we have created, duplicate it, and use the light wrap as an alpha mat. Now, when we bring it back to the normal blending mode and up to 100, we have the color of the background wrapping around the edges. So let's unsolo this, and obviously, this is way too strong. So we can play with the color mode. So maybe this one we go for the color dodge. This now looks like almost backlit. And we can just bring it down. And what we also can do is just mask that one out. So go to the light wrap and make it only on that side of the image. Feather this mask. And what we have here is like an interactive lighting on the hair and on the shoulder that actually casts the exact colors from our background. As we also get a little bit light on that side here, let's try to also add a mask around that part. And as you see, now we also get some shimmering light over here. A really really nice way of working with it. So let me just make a screenshot of that. Now I'm going to disable everything that we have done there. So this is the basic key with a new background and this is with color correction and integration. As I told you before this is of course a little bit over the top just for you to see how you could push this and this is really an easy setup. Once you've set up the key, you can just create your color blending, your light wrap within a few minutes. So and this is the end of part two of this mini series. But let me tell you something, if you liked what you've seen so far, I will record a bonus tutorial to show you the real basics of a different kind of keying within Nuke. So just feel free to also watch that because there are a few hints and tips and tricks that also adopt to After Effects and also the other way around. So, if you liked what you see, if you learned something today, and if you are very excited about all of this, just feel free to hit the subscribe button, because the more clicks I get, the more tutorials I can do, and I have to tell you, I really love doing those tutorials. So, see you in the next one.